The letter announcing the visitation had been delivered in the morning by a sleepy janitor to the principal. Every year, a visitation occurs at school, bringing the superintendent, district supervisors, and division supervisors for inspection and evaluation. Following the announcement, the morning classes were dismissed. The home economics building underwent a thorough cleaning. The staff wielded long-handled brooms, clearing away spider webs, and cleaned windows and floors. The building's interior was transformed with wooden boxes of Coronas Larga strategically placed, repairs made to the sink, and a French soap poster generating a debate over its removal. In two hours, the grounds of Pugadlawin High School were magically transformed. The flagpole received a sturdy cement base, the old gate got a fresh whitewash, and the once bare grounds erupted into a vibrant bougainvillea garden. Potted blooms arrived continuously through the gate, wheeled in by barrow and bicycle. Many of these flowers were borrowed from neighboring houses for the occasion. Then, the teaching staff and the student body had been divided into four working groups. The first group, led by Mrs. Davina Gracia, were banished to the kitchen to prepare the menu. It consisted of a 14-lab suckling pig, macaroni soup, embutido, chicken salad, baked lapu-lapu, morcon, leche flan, and ice cream, the total cost of which had already been deducted to the teacher's pay envelopes. The teachers of Group 2 had been assigned to procure the beddings and the dishes to be used for the supper. Instead of tackling the job themselves, they delegated the responsibility to their students. In a slightly chaotic fashion, these students ended up borrowing cots, pillows, and sleeping mats from their neighbors' homes. On the other hand, the third group was tasked with the duty of structuring the rooms. This involved the hurried construction of graphs, charts, and other visual aids to enhance the overall presentation. Teachers within this group found themselves in a frenzy to complete unfinished lesson plans, correct neglected theme books, and hastily stash away undesirable items. Lastly, the rowdiest freshman boys found themselves in the fourth and somewhat discriminated group at Bugadlawin High School. Under the leadership of Miss Noel, their recent task involved landscaping the premises. True to its name, this assignment entailed the removal of all unsightly objects from the school landscape. Miss Noel had long been at odds with the principal, or rather the principal's wife, ever since she was caught on a half-effaced smile. At 1.30, the superintendent's car and the supervisor's weapons carrier entered Pugadlawin through the town arch. The social studies teacher rushed down the steps to present Sampaguita garlands. Ms. Noel's searches for Mr. Ampil, the old language arts supervisor, but he's not present. Instead, a tall stranger, Mr. Sawit, emerges as the new English supervisor. He informs Ms. Noel of Mr. Ampil's sudden death. Mr. Sawit lightens the mood with jokes about their roles and recounts an amusing anecdote about the rehearsed class demonstration. He expresses his belief in the power of dance, particularly tango, to solve problems. In the classroom, Ms. Noel uses the oral approach method and Mr. Sawit takes notes. The period ends with a visit to the student's homemade printing press. The subsequent inspection of the building avoids less presentable areas. The bougainvillea receives sprays, leading to requests for cuttings. The academic supervisor notices the fresh appearance of the amitosis chart, prompting nervous laughter. Mr. Sawit discreetly asks Miss Noel about the town's cottage industry, and she responds, Puntal hats. The tour concluded with the dinner bell. 
and at 7 o'clock, the guests gathered for supper. The table, adorned with a stuffed buntok eagle, featured an impressive table setting with various elegant dishes. The superintendent and Mr. Albes held central positions, and the feast began. Ms. Rosales and Mrs. Olbes flanked Mr. Lava during the meal, with the former fanning him and the latter tending to the lapu-lapu on his plate. The remaining teachers of Pugad Lawin, having previously consumed hop yan coke, served as waitresses, ensuring beer glasses were never empty and napkins always within reach. Following dinner, the social hour commenced, with hosts and guests gathering in the sala where high school boys played the rondalia with a rendition of Merry Widow. During the social hour, Miss Noel, recognizing Mr. Alava's limited dancing abilities, shared the waltz with him. The principal arranged a pairings of supervisors with pretty instructors, while the others, considered less attractive or shy, were left to dance on the dance floor on their own. For many of the dance numbers, Miss Noel found herself partnered with Mr. Sawit. At 10 o'clock, the district supervisor suggested driving to the next town's fiesta dance celebrated at their plaza. The prettier female teachers were recruited to join, while Miss Noel, Mr. Sawit, along with other staff, chose to remain. During a conversation in the kitchen, Miss Noel candidly expressed her belief that the school visitation process was a farce, involving a facade of cleanliness, rehearsed classes, and an artificial display for the supervisors. Mr. Sawit, while initially dismissing it as a joke, acknowledged the existence of such practices. Miss Noel critiqued the entire system, emphasizing the need to please those in power over actual teaching quality. In response, Mr. Sawit warned her of potential consequences, including Mr. Olbes targeting her for insubordination. However, he offered support, proposing that if she tempered her idealism and refrained from expressing personal opinions, he would give her a good rating and recommend her for a position in Manila after a year. Miss Noel, stunned and on the brink of tears, reflected on the sacrifices and missed opportunities in her pursuit of education, only to confront a disappointing reality in Mr. Sawit. She grappled with the disillusionment of her efforts clashing with a bureaucratic system. She grappled with the conflict between her efforts in education and the rigid system. And Mr. Sawit's patronizing kiss on her forehead added to her sense of insult. Recalling her aunt's persistent advice to abandon teaching for a more lucrative path, Miss Noel contemplated the appeal of a carefree life. After the pandemonium, Leon, a student aspiring to become a lawyer entered the room. She questions her decision to betray her dream and wonders about the consequences for students if she were not there to guide them. The next morning, after breakfast, the supervisors prepared to leave. Mr. Buenaflor fetched the camera and they all posed on the sunny steps for a souvenir photo. The superintendent with Mr. and Mrs. Olbes on either side of him and the minor gods in descending order on the home of economic stairs. Miss Noel was late, but she ran to take her place with pride and humility on the lowest rung of the school's hierarchy.